Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, we showed no mercy, we bashed in Berlin, and now we have to go all out. Because, yes, we're pretty frequently going over AEW because AEW is doing the WrestleMania backlash to their WrestleMania in AEW All Out live from some arena in Chicago. That's not the Allstate or the United Center because that's what AEW does these days. So sit back, relax, and make sure you go look up for Odyssey Jones at the alumni page. Trick question. He's not Ooh. even there. It's Kings Ooh. of the Rings podcast. Episode number 388, exclusively on Wrestle Addict Radio, and it starts right now. And you did that man Night dirty. Music. Yeah, it's true. Seriously, Odyssey Jones. Can we can we officially say he is the worst draft pick in WWE history? I mean, he's yeah. up there. I mean, he was on TV once twice. and then he got twice, excuse yeah, me, twice. twice, and then and then he got <laughs> rightfully pulled off TV for allegations. Yeah, and and, uh, and then allegedly fired. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, if it's true, fuck him, right? Yeah. Fuck him straight to hell. He's, he's officially he's de- he's not on the WWE's website at all. Yeah, yeah. So he's been scrubbed. Yeah, he he's 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 not there anymore. Drafted twice in two years, made appearance twice in two years, and then very quickly was gone. All right, we've also seen, to be fair, though, plenty of instances, not so much domestic violence or domestic assault, whatever the accusation was, but previous accusations that turned out to be false, like JD McDonald. Was JD McDonald's false? It wasn't JD. I think it was yes, it was. His name. It was, was it JD? De- Devitt? Was it Devitt? No, J- what- he was Jordan, Jordan Devlin, Devlin at the time. Yeah. yeah. That's when he was on my daddy list. And yeah. then he got called out. Correct. So same thing with uh, Zachary Wentz, formerly of MSK. And MSK, I think Austin Theory might have had one too. He did. He did. So just because an accusation is me, it's true, but they definitely did the right thing pulling him off TV. Yeah. And if it's that they fired him, it makes me think, yeah, there's some truth. Yeah, there, there <laughs> probably is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to King's Rings Podcast, episode number 388. I'm your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us if you're watching us live on uh, on YouTube, uh, Facebook, yes, Facebook and Twitch, or if you guys are, woo! yes, 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 woohoo, maybe Instagram sometime in the very near future when I figure out how to actually do that. Uh, we're, <laughs> if you're listening to us, thank you guys for listening to us. If you're listening to us a little bit later than the time that we are recording the show, uh, please take some time out to leave a like, share some comments, uh, links to all of our good stuff, including some of our fantastic merch. We're wearing some pride merch right now. Uh, the links to all of that are in the description below. With me, as always, the man, the founder, the guy who's finally identified as a butch will tear shock how are you <laughs> I'm, I'm identifying as a butch yeah you'll you'll understand that in some I mean, time I, I know i mean i know what a butch is oh it's not but... that butch that you're thinking of oh okay so i'm not a lesbian no nice 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 you have to explain to me in the post show thing <laughs> that's other than the name butch <laughs> i don't know what a butch is so I knew it's... Is, this a, is this is this a tiktok thing like demure no it's not casey i told you oh, i told you he God. wouldn't get it um, yeah, you just <laughs> you need to watch this. K-, K Murphy, do you know what Butch is? Yes. Oh, You'll David. find out later. I hate being out of the loop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll... Maybe they're bored with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> Maybe it's Maybelline. I literally had nothing else um... to do for you, Kay. That's why. Yeah, I don't think I had anything eventful this Although week. Well, <laughs> now that you had your hair down, it does kind of work. Yeah, that's true. I don't think I've had my hair done on the show in like a thousand years. Yeah, Google just Google just said it's a lesbian. Yeah, no, so Google doesn't even, even well, Google doesn't. This know. is more wrestling Butches related. Butches are lesbians. But that's true. Butches are lesbians. Yeah, but this is more wrestling related. Hint, hint, it's in the Discord somewhere. You'll find it at some point. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Butch, like Pete, like, like not like like Pete Dunn, Butch. Kind of. Yes. Nice. Okay, I'm getting there. I'm getting, getting close. close. You're getting, getting close. close. You're getting close. You'll, you'll figure it out. At some I, don't, point. I don't want. I don't, I really don't want to search for it. Fretz, help me out here. Be a be a be a friend. Be a pal. <laughs> I think Fretz is just. I think Fretz is working too. He might be just listening to us. Mr. Fretz is at work. Yeah. You, you'll get it at some well, point. This looks like I'm fucked. It, it's listen. I've I've called you worse things on this show. Yeah, like last <laughs> last week you said you, you, you thought you thought I didn't think may, uh, I said mayonnaise wasn't spicy. Uh, ketchup was spicy. That would have been funny if I said thought mayonnaise was spicy. No, um, next week should be next week should be the uh, he bought the mayonnaise cologne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I thought about it. I thought it. about it too. <laughs> Just to be like, okay, this can't really smell like mayonnaise. <laughs> like. <laughs> 
you gotta go on an outing once with like jazz or something she's like you know what i'm gonna do it right I'm gonna Google it right now. If it's under fifty dollars, I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> I, but like, I but like, I, I, it's not a gimmick, right? Like they're actually making mayonnaise. No, it's cologne. real. Yeah, it's, it's real. You gotta find out the price for me. You really have to. I it's, think it's need... Will Levis number eight, sixty four dollars on eBay. Yeah. Negotiable. You need to buy it, and then like, you need to note how you go through life wearing perfume that smells like mayonnaise. Yeah. Like, how do people treat you smelling like mayonnaise? <laughs> You, they were like, damn, do you smell like you smell like a hot dog? <laughs> <laughs> you should make that a fantasy football punishment, like loser, like loser of the league. Loser has to <laughs> buy mayonnaise, mayonnaise. Has to wear mayonnaise cologne for a month. Or oh, dude, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna text my, my I'm gonna text my because uh, we do a we do a toilet bowl yes. in our league. Okay. Where the loser gets something silly, they buy him a silly gift. I'm gonna propose the mayonnaise. We buy them the mayonnaise. The mayonnaise cologne would be absolutely perfect. I keep seeing on TikTok people doing those like twenty four hour like diner or Waffle House challenges. They lose fantasy. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I would be in a Waffle House or a diner for twenty four hours. Why the fuck not? No, I think I feel like that's not a hard. It's not a punishment. That's punishment. a reward. Waffle House is delicious. Yeah, first of all, exactly. Waffle House is so good. You know, I know we were talking. We were sideburging on Waffle House in the uh, in our pre show, and I wanted to make the point. That Ricky, we actually the three of us should all open a Waffle House in Suffolk County and just double the prices. No one will have any idea. <laughs> Honestly, it, <laughs> if we can get a, if we can get a franchise okay. for it, I think you, I think you might Where be right. Where in Suffolk County should we put a Waffle House? Uh, Montauk. No, too far. No. My you wanted to be a, want to be like a mi- middle middle country road in Center Reach. Oh, Ronkonkoma. Ronkonkoma could work. Even around me could work. Bayshore's uh, up and coming. Bayshore would work. Yeah. We can do a lot of places for a Waffle House. Great. We'll we'll call it. We'll have like random like wrestling specials <laughs> for, for Waffle House. Just exclusive to our exclusive to our shop. I love that. Yeah. We'll have a meal called the slack and it'll be just like one piece of bacon. Canadian bacon. Yes. Female, as they may call it, as well. But anywho, Can- Canadian bacon and poutine would be the slack. God, that sounds incredible. It does sound incredible, actually. Yeah. It sounds amazing. <laughs> that sounds absolutely, absolutely wonderful. So yeah, we are going to go a lot into AEW and All Out, and luckily for all of us, it's not a mega show. Thank the freaking Lord. But before we get to that, let's take a look back at this weekend's or last weekend's Bash in Berlin, which yes. The German crowd is still really horrifyingly scary when they chant in unison. <laughs> yeah. 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 They were really good, too. They were a good crowd. I mean, nothing's ever going to beat that French crowd. No. Um, or the Puerto Rican I would, crowd. I would, I would rank, yeah, I was going to say, I would, I would rank these Germans third below France and Puerto Rico. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic crowd. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good PLE. Kind of predictable. Um. It was interesting to see Randy and Gunther put on pretty much a, a literal Matt classic. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Gunther was just in his element. Nothing special. Just bare bones. Just, I'm going to hit you harder. And at one point, I'm just going to choke you out when I'm finished with you. I like Randy taking a, uh, a crowd break. <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> he, he did the wave. The wave Dude, something about the wave in wrestling just works so well because it's a it, it's the arena. It's done well, yeah. Yeah, I haven't works. done the wave at a wrestling show in a really long time. Never have I. I don't think I've ever done the wave at a wrestling show. Really? Yeah, I don't think I ever have. I feel like they did the wave at Mania Thirty Five. Maybe. I definitely did the wave at Mania Thirty Five. Hmm. I know I didn't sit with you guys, so maybe that's why. Was it when you guys but... couldn't see? Yes. That's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> when they shine the light in your eyes. Um, Yo, so bright. But yeah, no, the the, the card was, was rather decent. Uh, Jade and Bianca won their titles back. Uh, CM Punk and Drew McIntyre is the feud that will never end at all whatsoever. Nor should it. I mean, it was a great match. I told you guys good. they were going to do the... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I and I called the you know punks gonna be on his back and hitting the corners yeah and behind you because they do the exact same spots in every single one of these fucking matches yeah. 
Cody and Cody and KO I, was good. Uh, I think, for my opinion, outside of a strap match, I think match of the night uh, was was uh, Dom and Liv and Rhea and Damian. That was a really fun match to watch. It was. They told a great I story, agree. too. Yeah, it did. It really, really did. And, it, and it's obviously continuing on. Uh, but, Kay, any thoughts on Bash in Berlin? I loved Bash in Berlin. That it was a it was a workday kind of pay per view for me, so I was makes sense. Bums. Yeah, it was something that like I wish my Wi Fi went out, so I could have just watched <laughs> it. It was so good. It was so fun. The German crowd, very scary, but I like am really happy for European crowds finally getting to like go to live wrestling events. Mm-hmm. Like they're so happy, and Americans are so ungrateful. And it was a really good show. Yeah, these are their WrestleManias. I didn't get a chance to watch the post show at all because, unfortunately, I did. unfortunately, Bash in Berlin was also the same day as the first week of college football. So I was, mm, you had I priorities. Was busy. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you had priorities. I was very, very busy. Uh, however, there was some vitriol that you can probably talk about a little bit, Kay, when uh, Bianca and Jade came to came to the presser and answer some questions. Triple H did not show up mm-hmm. because Triple H is one of Triple H's daughters was starting college and he wanted to be there. That Fair makes enough. me feel old too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's also very true. Shane McMahon's son is a is a recruit for North Carolina. Football. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, North Carolina football, not basketball. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's still impressive. <laughs> yeah. The other one very impressive. I think the very second impressive. one is a recruit for Indiana. Oh, cool. Football, which is not impressive at all, um, to be completely honest with you. But yeah, no. So do you want to elaborate, Kay, on what was what was asked of uh, of Jade and Bianca and the, the really awkward situation they were put in? So pretty much, pretty much like at the start of their interview, uh, Jade was pretty much asked about AEW and like how I don't remember the question verbatim. So like paraphrasing mm. a bit. But they were asking, like, how different her experience has been since coming to AEW and what has it been like for Bianca to work with Jade now that she's not in AEW and that they're together. And Jade flat out was like, I am sick of being asked about AEW. Like, I work here now. Like, this, my focus is on here and the future, and I just want to move forward. Yeah, she was like, guys, I've been signed with WWE for over a year. We don't yeah. have to talk about this anymore. I I, I th- get that. I get that. But honestly, I think it's a I think it's a fair question. I I do I, th- I do I do think it's a fair question. But you know, asked asked and answered because I now. Will, well, go, sorry, go ahead, Kay. No, I said I will say like I feel like that the now that the press seems to have more freedom to ask questions about AEW by name. Because a lot, I'm noticing a lot more people are mentioning AEW by name instead of just saying like where they were or the other yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. I feel like people are taking advantage of that. So Jade's been here a year. The question's old news, but now they're like, oh, we can say AEW. We can ask. Yeah. There was also another question I was asked, and I forgot what it was. But the reporter who was him. like, he's like, hey, so and so from so and so. He's like. You know, we don't pe- we don't pit black women against each other, but and like act some sort of like oh, stop oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> stop it. I'd be like, fuck you, next question. I'm not even, I'm not even answering your stupid question. They looked so they looked, mad. I, I would have been pissed too. I don't no, I don't remember the second half of the question, but he starts. He's like, I don't he's like, we don't pit black women against each other. I was just like, oh God. Yeah. Oh god, like that's just not something you should like why? Well, I think why I do think we it was, need to do that at all? I think it was at the Mania presser when there was Jade, Bianca, Naomi. One of the reporters asked, like, you know, what does this moment mean for, you know, black girls and young black girls and, you know, people look like you or yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And Bianca answered the question beautifully. She was like, yeah, it's great. But, you know, we've been doing this for the past few years. I kind of want to move on to the idea of, you know, it's not just black girls. It's all girls. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I am trying to represent a culture more than just who I am and who, I, that identity politics. It's more of, you know. I want young boys to look up to me too, not just young black girls. I look up to so Bianca, like, goddammit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, I look, I look up to Bianca too. She has a great story. She's a crazy athlete. She's great in the ring. She's a great with kids. So she's everything you want in a role model, right? Yeah. I love so, her. But I love how she answered that question. It's just like, guys, this race and identity, this 
I'm sick of it. Like I've been there. I've done this. I've answered this question. Let's move on to something bigger and better. And I think that's totally fair as a performer where you don't want to be like, yes, yes, black girls are going to look up to me as they should. But you know what? Well, young white boys should also look up to me for the exact same mm -hmm. reasons young black girls should look up to me. Yeah, no, yeah. It was, it was a very awkward experience for them at Bash in Berlin. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's, a, it's, just a, it's a weird question to ask anybody about race unless something specifically happened around race. Yeah. I mean, like. Like, yeah, if like if if you're going to have like another George Floyd and yes, obviously ask questions about race, that's when it's appropriate. But if nothing happened on TV related to race, why even bring it up? It's just not important. Yeah. In that in that moment. Yeah, it was it was a very awkward pressure, which at some point I will watch. Um, but it seemed like it was it was it was a rough one. It was a rough someone one. Someone asked I, the one thing I saw. Someone asked Cody about the Vince documentary. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that was, was awkward too. He was like, "Do you plan on watching it?" And Cody was just like, "You know, I'm rewatching Game of Thrones right now, so <laughs> when I get around to it." But he was like, "No, no, and all." That's and then, a good then save. Actually, That's a good save. Yeah, yeah, no, it was. But then he actually seriously answered the question. He's like, "Listen, the boys in the back, like, we we." No, it's we all are aware of it, but we don't really talk about it. We're more focused on putting on a show yeah. and the crowd and our in the business moving forward. And um, then he asked him, "Do you do you think do you believe the allegations?" And Cody was just like, "I'm not fucking answering that question. Like, I don't know enough about it." M moving on. Yeah. Asked and answered again. The, as a journalist, that's a very fair question because that was released about the documentary mm -hmm. the day of. And part of your job as a journalist is to ask those tough questions to the top people in the company. Being Triple H, Cody, and whomever else. Yeah. So fair question, and Cody's a pro and knew how to answer it. Yeah. So nothing, nothing wrong with his answer, nothing wrong yeah. with the question, so, but it was definitely I, worth mentioning. I will say, whoever's doing media training with WWE now is doing a really good job with them. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot LA of these LA night needs some work, but yeah. <laughs> well, not everyone's like flawless or anything, but like a lot of these answers, specifically Cody, Jade, Bianca, very thoughtful answers, but also like very real answers. Yeah. 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 No. Like they like feel the, like real people. That's why I like the presser. Okay. I don't know if you were on a few weeks ago when I asked Ricky this question, but um, I asked him if you prefer the pressers to be like char in character or oh, yeah. the real life. Person. We did talk about this. Like it, it was with Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton specifically after Nia won the belt. Because Nia's, oh, yes. Nia, like, like I Nia's, was not present. Like Nia's a heel, right? Yeah. And she's presented as a heel. And Tiffy is an up-and-coming heel. But in the presser, you know, Nia had a real-life, I don't know her real name, but moment where. Leah Fania. No, I'm just going to. Yeah, Lena. sure. Lena, sorry. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be me and give you a real answer. Now, Kay, you as a fan, I guess, as a podcaster and commentator, do you prefer them to be in character? Or do you, like, do you prefer them to be their real selves? I think it depends on what the presser is trying to accomplish with the presser. Mm. So I actively, it's not a secret, I'm not a fan of Nia Jax as a wrestler. I talk shit on her as a wrestler regularly. However, and I was, <laughs> so and I was <laughs> I've had my fair share. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. So I, talk, I was actually talking to Liv about this recently, and I like that she doesn't know as much about wrestling because she's understanding what I'm saying now. So I was explaining to her how unsafe of a worker Nia Jax is. So now I have this narrative fed into her head. So yeah. now she hates Nia Jax. How I really likes Nia Jax on Total Divas. I like her as a person and the presser with her and Tiffany Stratton. I'm like, wow, I actually don't fucking hate her right now. Yeah. Like, and I feel a, like. There's a moment after she won a title too. So it's okay to have some like. You know, yeah. Emotion. Like, I feel it's like you can be facey and emotional. Sorry, I was having tech problems. You can be facey and emo an emotional and aggressor despite being a heel character. If you like win a title or something, that's fine. But like, if Nia Jax is going to continue to kiss babies on every presser and then be a heel on TV, that might be a little weird. Yeah. So my answer is yes. I like both, but it just depends on what you use it for. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's I I, I like that. Ricky, Ricky pretty much the same thing. And that's where I fall as well. You know, you got you got tools in your tool chests. Use them. Yeah, make sure you pick the right one for the right, 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 yeah. right one for the right occasion. Yeah, it was like right. the thing. You think I talk for a little? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, it's almost like so. It reminds me of we talked about this a while ago when they weren't really doing the pressers, but they had like raw talk or talk and smack right, right after an event, 
and stuff yeah. like that. And there was one time where the only person I knew who was able to be like a real person, then jump into character at the same time. And it was bliss. She had just won a title. And oh yes. I remember this. She got super yeah. like real life yeah. emotional. Then on the flip of a switch, she went back to being a heel. I forget. I, I think it was maybe what was her name? Um, Moxley's wife, Renee, 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 Renee. Renee. Paquette? Yeah, Renee Paquette asked her a question. She's like, oh, no. Yeah. And then she right, right, <laughs> right back, back into the character. Into it, yeah. I, I remember I remember we talked about it because I was like, that is impressive because that was probably the mm-hmm. tables match when she beat Becky. Lynch it was the, the tables. It was the tables. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So that that was that was huge. Yeah, that was definitely huge. Yeah, that's very hard to do as a performer. Yeah. And she she was fantastic with it. Uh, so moving on from Bastion Berlin, we saw his name and he did appear, but unfortunately he did lose the main event. <laughs> Wait, we got to crown it. We got to crown Bastion Berlin. Uh, it was actually lower oh. than an, lower than an Avery. I give it a seven and a half. I think I think last week I said it was gonna be a seven and a half, um, and I said I was gonna give it like an eight, eight and a half for the crowd. So yeah, eight. I'll give it a strong eight. I also am giving it a seven and a half. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's fine. Oh, I'm the high horse up here. Who'd have thought? You, were, you don't see that very you often. You're the high horse. But yes. But anywho, back to NXT No Mercy, which was on Sunday in Denver. Quite a hell of a turnaround. Uh, like I said, we said his name. He did not appear. But Jul- I mean, he did appear, but he still did lose, which is. I mean, he's right there. I see him. Oh, yeah. yeah you're finally figuring that out. I've had, <laughs> I've had that there. For- I see him every week. I'm just mentioning <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joe Henry did lose, but he was well worth the main event, and it was a fantastic wild finish. Kay, I know you were watching it alongside with me for a bit um, with with Trick Williams as a special guest referee, who's probably the most enthusiastic special guest referee ever. Oh, I loved him as a ref. Yeah. I would watch him ref. He a wore a, he pretty much had an open shirt ref vest. I love it. <laughs> that, that he... Even as it was Sean's idea. <laughs> probably. He didn't have a short style. He did not have the shorts at all whatsoever. <laughs> um, but it was a crazy finish. Ethan Page, uh, Erks won out. We also had uh, Wesley lost to Zachary Wentz, who, who the night before won the TNA X Division Championship. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, they had, they had a show on, like, Saturday or Friday. Um, yeah, they won the X Division Championship. So he came, beat Wesley, which is kind of a shocker. So that was a TNA person that was going to win. Um, Chase U lost the tag titles um, to uh, to Nathan Fraser and Axiom, and then did I call that? No, no I didn't. we all I called Chase U. We all called. Yeah, we all thought it was gonna be Chase U because he just won it. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember any of my predictions. Yeah, Ridge Holland ended up turning on Chase U, which I kind of didn't see coming. Uh, oh yeah, Oba Femi beat Tony D'Angelo because of course Oba Femi's beating Tony D'Angelo. I heard that match was. Bonkers. It was brutal. Tony D'Angelo. Tony D'Angelo looked really good. Really, really good. But I remember Kay texted me during the event and Kay's like, I'm already an Oba Femi fan. Yeah. Yeah, Kay, it was your first time watching NXT in a very long time. What did you you think? Okay, this is my first time watching NXT since 2.0. Um I believe the last uh live event I watched for NXT was probably the last takeover. Oh wow. The last takeover. It was like 31 or 32. Something like that. Um, yeah, I gave up on NXT really quickly during the 2.0 era because, like, I yeah. just, it's not my thing. But Joe Hendry is literally the only reason I watched it. And I had a really good time. Like, I low key and bummed I'm not watching NXT right now just because Pete Dunn is on it. <laughs> um, but I'm invested in what Pete Dunn and Trick are doing. Um, I really did enjoy this show. Like, I was frying chicken cutlets and like cursing out Tony D'Angelo. It was very long island, very fun. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed, it was a good show. Yeah. <laughs> he would. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now Oba Femi won. Uh, Roxanne beat Jada Parker in a pretty good match. Jada Parker looked really good. Uh, Will, you would have loved the promo for Jada Parker and Roxanne. So they had like a sit down. Uh, backstage on NXT, like the week leading into No Mercy. And so we're talking shit back and forth to each other. And Jada Parker goes to Roxanne. She goes, Roxanne, I'm going to slap the taste out of your mouth. And so Roxanne nice. starts talking, and then Jada gets up and slaps her to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hell yeah, Red Team. It, <laughs> it was great. Uh, we finally saw the debut of Julia. 
showing up to challenge Roxanne after Roxanne won her match. Uh, Julia looks fantastic. She is probably going to be a huge player, if not the new face of NXT, and take the title off of Roxanne. We're still waiting on Stephanie Vacare to show up, and we're still waiting on a uh, rumored Delta from Australia to also show up. So the NXT Women's Division is going to get a massive boost within the next calendar year or so. And, of course, Ethan Page snuck one out. Um, overall, really good event. Not my favorite one. I think Heat Wave was... 10 times better. Oh yeah, Kalani Jordan had a match that we did not we weren't able to talk about because it wasn't official until the last second. Uh but Kalani Jordan also had a match in the NXT North Women's North American Championship. She ended up winning beating Wendy Chu. But overall it was a solid match. I'd also give this probably probably a 7. Okay, what are your thoughts? I have a question. Yeah. But I'm going to give it a 7. Okay, so I vaguely remember Wendy Chu. Yes. And I vaguely did she have was she always goth and pajamas? Because I've no. sworn she was pajamas but not goth. She was pajamas when recently turned goth, and then her her, her bestie Rosemary showed up on NXT last week. I, I forgot see. there was a wrestler who wrestled in PJs. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, they had I like was... a street fight like a year or so ago, and instead of bringing out Jack, she brought out Legos. Oh. Yes, that's the always <laughs> yeah. We, we always use Legos instead of the tax. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was trying. Liv was asking me if I know who people on the card were, and we got to the Wendy Chu match, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure Wendy Chu is a chick that wears pajamas. Yes. And then, with no con to other context, and then I'm like, J.K. Wendy Chu was goth with pajamas. Yeah, that that's a that's a new occurrence, and then the the actual okay. the actual goth person Tatum Paxley showed up and choked out Wendy Chu, who Tatum Paxley is Victoria's daughter. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so now that Victoria has a Legends contract, there should be some interesting interactions between her and her daughter on NXT. Mm-hmm. Probably very, very soon. Um, Very, very soon. So NXT No Mercy, check it out. Good card. I think the last PLE they have for them this year is going to be... Ho- well, it's probably going to be Halloween Havoc and then Deadline is going to occur for NXT. So two more big shows for, for NXT going into the end of of this year and speaking of the end of this year the usa network has finally said that they're going to have wwe week because starting next week raw nxt and smackdown are all going to be on the usa network because this friday is the final smackdown on fox thank god you know um this deal started in 2019 and it had a lot a lot of potential and then the world died um (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know um and then it kind of dwindled it was struggling to find its footing i think it found its footing smackdown in particular um with the bloodline like i think this era of smackdown is going to be the bloodline era because this is when roman and the bloodline were running rough shot uh on smackdown uh but it's now moving over to the usa network uh for the foreseeable future with Michael Cole and uh, Corey Graves doing SmackDown. And this week was the first week of the new Raw team, which is Joe Tessitore and Wade Barrett. I thought Joe Tessitore did a great, did a, did a pretty good job. Maybe needs to be a little bit more enthusiastic, but I liked what he did so far. Uh, did anybody watch Raw and listen to Joe Tessitore in his first I show? I, I did as well. Um, yeah, he did fine. Yeah. He, he wasn't bad. I agree with you. He had a little more pep in his step, but... Him and Wade went back went back and forth pretty good. He had a few good moments where it's like, you know, he played into the actual carniness of wrestling. Like, yeah. you got to support this, or mm-hmm. how can you support that? You know, he played up the good guys are good guys, bad guys are bad guys shtick. Mm-hmm. So he has a great voice. Great, yeah, his, great, his like, voice is fantastic. His punctuation, not punctuation, like how his, the his pace diction? Of his diction. That's what diction, I was looking yeah. for. Thank you, K. Murphy. Yeah, his diction was great. Um, yeah, he'll be fine. We'll be totally fine. Yeah, he's he's got a good he I like how he points out the obvious. Like when Drew attacked hey. when Drew attacked uh CM Punk, he goes, It's Drew McIntyre in a hoodie. I was like, Thank God. Yes. I, dude, I, I'm not gonna lie. I thought that I, was so funny. I almost cut the audio. I was like, that, that's Drew McIntyre wearing a hoodie. <laughs> but you know, Michael Cole would have been like, Who the hell is that? <laughs> what the hell is he doing here? <laughs> yeah, Drew, he's like, no, it's Drew McIntyre and a hoodie. Let's let's cut to the chase. You know yeah, who this he, is. He, he Not the Scottish psychopath in a sweatshirt. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, that would have been a good one too. <laughs> yeah, but no, he was good. He's only gonna get better. Wade did a good job carrying him when the when they were like down periods. Uh yeah. so but yeah, no, I'm very excited for Joe Desator. He did like the primetime show this like he did the 3 30 slot on college football on Saturday, and it was in Florida. So we had to then fr- fly from Florida to Denver 
to do Raw. So I think that's... Yeah, I wonder how he's going to like the travel schedule. He's probably not going to like it very much. <laughs> yeah, so I think he's going to do like college football Saturdays, Raw on Mondays. Yeah. I mean, it's that's not a bad hard. work week. It's not a bad work, bad work Depends week. Depends on where we are. Cause... Saturday and Monday. Well, like, for instance, he's got, he promised to do a college football game this Saturday, and then he's got to fly to Canada. Yeah. You know. Is college football only on Saturdays? Primarily, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but there are some other like games that'll be on like a Friday night or a Thursday night, but usually usually Saturday. From from noon to midnight, essentially, because you got to get the games on the West Coast. Yeah, that sucks. Though he's like, we're gonna, we're gonna throw you into WWE. By the way, it's a three hour show. Well, Sorry. yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and Raw's gonna be quote unquote their season premiere next week. So <laughs> sorry, Chris. <laughs> premiere. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget how fucking stupid that was. That's how they went off Chris Jericho from TV. <laughs> so yes, WWE Week is coming. The RIP to the Fox SmackDown era. And I will t- I will say this. Everything that happened with SmackDown was barely anything under Fox control. Like, Fox tried their damnedest with this. Did. Yeah. And they were just due to victim of circumstance and, you know, random acts of God, <laughs> as the term goes. Yeah. I mean, WWE made out with this deal like a fucking bandit. Yeah, a billion like, dollars over five years. Yeah, like <laughs> looking, looking, looking back, WWE really did Fox dirty. They give, they gave them a really bad deal because Fox lost a lot of money on this deal. Did they? But WWE had some of the best programming in years. it's it really doesn't make much sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean. I'm just glad ACDC isn't the theme anymore. It was just a really bad theme. Are you ready? For a no. good time. Oh, thank you. That's Are you right. ready? The musical change. I am going to mix the Fox bot. I am going to miss the too. Fox bot. Too. The Fox robot was pretty Do dead. you remember when they had the draft on SmackDown and it had the, yes. Fox the, in the, in the Fox bot? The Fox bot was yeah, in the war that, room. Was, that, that shit was awesome. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. So obviously... Being on Fox was a lot of pressure for WWE. Do you think we would have gotten the bloodline and how good it was if it wasn't on Fox? Yes, yes I do. I think WWE benefited for the fact that it was on network cable television when the bloodline storyline happened because that just yeah. exposed their best storyline in years to a wider audience. And I think it was but- also a condition for Roman Reigns coming back. He's like, I'm turning heel. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah, so the fact that we had that story on network TV, primarily on network TV, I think WWE benefited the most out of it because it just reached a wider audience of people. Like, yeah. Roman Reigns is almost at the point of, like, pop culture, like, lexicon now. Yeah, dude, he was in a David Spade movie. You can't get much higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> is David Spade really the bar we want to raise? Yeah, I think we want to go <laughs> higher than Sp- Roberts. Yeah, I think we want to go higher than David Spade. So... But yeah, RIP to the Fox era. We barely knew me. We started out with Kofi losing the title and Bailey cutting her hair. That was the first episode. Oh my God, yeah. Bailey killed that the was. Bailey buddies and Kofi got Kofi's title. Kofi got, Kofi got squashed. Yeah, yeah. Kofi got yeah. squashed. <sighs> RIP. Well, we'll see what happens when they move over to USA. And now, folks, let's go to what I like to call the WrestleMania backlash to their WrestleMania. Oof. <laughs> It is. Oof. It is. Ouch. You're not wrong. <laughs> that cuts deep. I don't even, I don't even care for AEW. But, that cuts deep. <laughs> but tell me if I'm wrong. Like, literally, we have. You're not wrong at all. This is two weeks after their biggest show of the year and probably one of their most enjoyable shows that I've ever watched uh, from top to bottom. Um, it's two weeks after. It's on Saturday now. Saturday, not Sunday. And it's in Lo and Behold, Chicago. And, like, they're in like their third tier arena you know this is the now center the now yeah the now arena it's not even at uh the all-state arena it's not at united center it's at the now center and the all-state arena also isn't that big like they could have sold it out the probably. all-state arena is so cramped it's very cramped it is cramped oh, but the like acoustics are used. amazing yeah maybe it's being used all-state arena let me google it i don't think it is i think they use a the now arena uh before for all out but anywho event calendar all state arena yeah what do we got for the all state it's probably not anything important friday september 6th saturday september 7th that's this saturday yeah Mm -hmm. uh you got grupo fontera uh 
it's some Hispanic act. Oh, oh my friend likes them. Oh, yeah. So maybe they were booked. So, yeah, they were booked. Oh. Fair enough. Fair enough. So it happens. But, yes, AW All Out is pretty much what, I, what I've seen from the card and what I've watched on Dynamite is they are pretty much tying up some loose ends of things that kind of need to be wrapped up before he's this, uh, theoretically they move on to a different chapter of essentially their new year in wrestling. So we're going to start off here with the AEW World Championship. Brian Danielson showed up on AEW TV on Dynamite and pretty much said, hey, I had a great moment at All In. I won in front of my children. My family was there. Uh, my family was, was there. And, you know, uh, it was one of the best moments of my career. I won the world title. That means something to me. He goes, I, I know I said if I didn't win... You know, I'm if I didn't win, I'm going I was going to retire, but obviously I'm not going to retire now or anytime soon. However, when I do lose, I will then officially retire. He also said that it's oh, so he's doing. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I say. Would do. Yeah, he also said that he needs neck <laughs> surgery soon. <laughs> um, he, he, yeah, <laughs> he needs neck surgery soon. And, and technically his contract with AEW was was finished on August 1st. So we are essentially on Daniel Bryan borrowed time. Uh, he's like, I'll face anybody first come first serve. And obviously uh, the goat man, Jack Perry showed up with his TNT championship, challenging Brian Danielson to the AEW world championship. And I I'm pretty sold on the fact that Brian Danielson's going to win this. My, yeah. Yeah, my yeah. bigger concern with this is how much longer is Brian Danielson going to test fates? Before it comes to bite him in the ass. He's going to die in the ring. That's what he wants. He's going to die on pay-per-view. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can easily see that happening. I generally do not hope that happens. Yeah. But. I think it's going to happen. That's what he wants. He is going to test the limits. Yeah. Until he gets paralyzed or severely, really injured. Yeah. You know, he's a warrior. He's going to go out on a sword. Part of me respects the fuck out of it. But. Mm -hmm. And has got kids, too. He's got two. Which is. Which is why I think he might not go out as crazy as he probably would like to go out because he has two kids. I give him, I think he's going to go until the end of the year. Like, the year's almost over. He's not going to drop to Jack Perry. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, this is not a pay-per-view match. Like, I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, this is like a dynamite match for me, if I'm being honest. Yeah, it is, totally. Yeah, and it Like, Tony Khan, you have all this money. Look something more interesting. Listen, he only as of right now, there are only six matches on this card, which is like nothing for AEW. And thank fucking God. <laughs> um, it's not that long of a show. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Brian Danson here. The bigger question yeah, is who does sure. he mm -hmm. lose to? Who does he who gets the Brian Danielson rub by retiring Brian Danielson? Kenny or Okada. Watch the fucking be MJF. That would be good too. <laughs> I could see it actually. Yeah, that's the thing. There's a lot of people who would very much benefit in that company. I could see Hangman doing it. Anybody else? I could see I could see Swerve doing it again. Kind of Swerve getting his title back. Um, I could see Will Osprey doing it. Double champ, the two biggest titles in AEW. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just, he just drop the other one. He has too many belts as it is. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I almost said I almost said Will Hobbs. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been seen on TV in a minute. I don't think. I mean, is he still with AEW? I don't. I I I guess theoretically. If if Ricky Starks didn't have a foot out the door, I would say Ricky Starks <laughs> could do it. But he's too friends with Cody, so yeah. So who knows? But yeah, we're gonna go Brian Dan's in here. Email Jack Perry with his email TNT Championship belt are gonna lose, and what will probably be a very interesting match. I think in another world, Jack Perry could do it. I also think in another world, Sammy Guevara could do it. Yeah, but neither of those are happening in this world. No, 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 not any, not any time. Ra wow, that's a good one, Taekwondo. It is Raven. It is Raven Jack Perry. He's very Raven now. Like very, very ECW Raven. Quote the Raven nevermore. Feel my pain. <laughs> yeah, but have you, seen, have you ever watched a Raven promo from ECW '97? Uh, not recently. Not in a it's, long time. It's incredible he's you know, he was really? good at that he was great at that character yeah like i know like ecw is literally just a glorified clip show and it's a bunch of nonsense but at the ends when they do all the backstage promos mm -hmm. they're 
most of them are really, really, really good. Especially Raven, Tommy Dreamer, or even a Stevie Richards. When Stevie Richards is after the BWO, and he kind of goes on his own before he goes to WCW. Yeah. Like, he has this one last push for a title shot, and he cuts some really, really good promos, and the crowd's really behind him as Big Stevie Cool, nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, he, then he follows Raven over to WCW in summer of 97 and does fucking nothing. Wasn't Raven like pictured as like the rich kid who just had problems that he just designed his own? Yeah, he was the rich kid who didn't want money and he was neglected by his parents. Then he, he took it out on Tommy Dreamer because Tommy Dreamer was like the football jock who got all the girls. Which is which, not Tommy Dreamer. Which is not which is not believable at all. <laughs> no, not at all <laughs> whatsoever. That, that's, like, that's like the echelon of their feud. Raven's just mad. Dreamer got pussy. <laughs> <laughs> It happens. It happens. I wonder who. I mean, I get yeah, it. Right? Right, I mean, yeah. who's, who hasn't been jealous? The guy who slangs all the poon in high school. <laughs> yeah. I, listen, man. WCW. That's all you got to say, WCW. Moving on to the AW International Championship. Yes, because it's not the American Championship anymore. Sorry, Will. Uh, it is back to the International Championship. Dude, I swear to God, when I saw he won it, I read it as the Intercontinental title. <laughs> I, that's how I read it, even though it wasn't on there. But I was like, oh, he won the Intercontinental title. <laughs> Why does Pac? Oh, the Trios title. He won the Trios title at, uh, at All In. Right. Isn't it great we would show his wrestler in a singles match for another title? <laughs> yeah, listen, listen. I, Wrestling! I, exactly, I don't make the rules. How this match ended up to be was... <laughs> Neither does Tony. <laughs> Discord that I found on Twitter today about Tony booking a match. Um, was it's a oh, tip yeah. of the crown. Tip the crown? The yeah, it's a tip of the crown. Anyway, how this match came to be... <laughs> oh, I did see this, yeah. This is going to heat through your dynamite. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So Ricochet debuted. His he had his first match against Kyle Fletcher. Uh, he won his match obviously because that's what you do. And uh, at the end of the match, Osprey came out because Osprey and Ricochet, duh. Um, Osprey came out. He was about to say something at the top of the ramp, and Pac came from behind and gave him a reverse hurricane run on the stage. I love how Ricochet is being booked already. <laughs> 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 so much better than Triple H. <laughs> So Pac was Pac is like, you know, winning the trio's title wasn't my moment at all in. I deserved more, blah, blah. He's still mean and broody and a bastard. And so I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that's how he he attacked Will Ospreay. And so now we're feuding for the international championship at all out. And again, thanks for coming, Pac, but we're keeping us on Will Ospreay because there's no way you don't get Will Ospreay versus Ricochet for that international championship down the you mean, road. You mean the guy who just won the belt two weeks ago isn't going to drop it a week later? You'd be surprised. I mean, they both won yeah, the belt two weeks ago. True. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I got to go to Will Ospreay here. Kayfabe. Yeah, yeah, duh. Will Ospreay. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're getting Will Ospreay versus Ricochet because obviously Tony's going to play the hits here. Yeah, it's a great match, of course. Yeah. Everyone wants to see it. We, we've all seen that clip of them in Japan where, like, they don't touch each other. Yeah, all the, fl like, all yeah. the flippy for, like, shit. For, like, yeah, for, like, 53 seconds. Yeah, to, to it's cool. It's, like, the definition of all the flippy shit. Yeah. I can't tell you how many of my friend, non-wrestling friends have sent me that clip and go, have you seen this? I go, yeah. Me it's, too. It's, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, it's, it's, it's cool, I Thousands guess. and thousands of times, guys. I mean, listen, you're going to get us as mad as Vader was when that clip came out. I'm kidding. Yeah. Brought Vader out of retirement to face Osprey for like a match. It's like, guys, you're showing me wrestling where they actually don't hit each other. Like, <laughs> you're supposed to be impressed when it looks like they hit each other. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, Will Osprey and Pac. Well, I think will be a fun match because Pac's gonna play his role really, really well. What is probably going to, well, not this match. Um, but speaking of matches, Mercedes Monet putting the TBS championship on the line against Hikaru Shida, who won a fatal four way on AEW Collision, which is kind of just a weird show to get through. To be honest with you, I watched it the other day. Um, there's a lot of six man tag matches, a lot Classic. of six man <laughs> tag matches. Um, but this is, again, this is just something that they're putting together. Hikaru Shida wants a title again, and she's going up against Mercedes Monet. And you're paying Mercedes Monet how much money? She's winning this match. Yeah. Okay. I mean, she remember, she books her own matches, so. She does? Does she have creative control? I don't know. I thought she did. I know she's like the highest paid female in wrestling, and Swerve got a good pay bump, too. I mean, as she Swerve's, should be. 
Yeah, Swerve signed, I think, until like 2029. Yeah, Swerve, Swerve restructured his deal. Yeah. He got a gun extension, which, hey, man, good for him. Listen, I would he too. had a fantastic year. He, he arguably had the feud of a year in AEW with him and Hangman Page. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If I was Swerve, I'd go TK. I'll drop the belt, but I want more money like now. Yeah, and he TK's like, okay, <laughs> whatever you want, buddy. <laughs> Listen, he made history. He's the first ever African American AEW World Champion. Something that WWE took over fifty years to do with Kofi Kingston. AEW, hey, the Rock. AEW did in five. Rock's Canadian. Um, I know. No, the Rock. Dwayne. I mean, Dwayne is Canadian, but yeah. Rock isn't Canadian. Yes, he is. Who's not? Born Wait, what? Canadian. Yeah, the Rock's father is Canadian. Oh, his dad's Canadian. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, The Rock is Canadian. I didn't watch Young Rock. No, it's not part of Young Rock. That's just part of. He's said that before. Oh. Um. Yeah. I wonder what percentage Canadian he is, because um, like obviously the like The Rock's dad is also Samoan. No, his mom is. His mom is. Yeah. Rocket Johnson's oh, so from Nova so, Scotia. Oh, so, He's half Canadian, half Samoan. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. The more you know. Yeah, I don't know why I thought his dad was the Samoans. I thought they're both Samoans. Nah, honestly. the mom, the mom. <clears throat> we watched Young Rock. There's a whole story about it, but yeah, it's um, the mom read Rocky Johnson because Rocky Johnson was wrestling for Rock's grandmother's promotion in Hawaii. Dude, there are too many people who are like silently Canadian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you seen the actors? Lately? <laughs> especially, in, especially in wrestling. <laughs> Probably going to be the name of the show, Silently Canadian. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, what's, up, what's up, Ryan Reynolds? Uh, but yeah, Mercedes Monet. No, he is very proudly Canadian. Yeah, yeah wait till you watch. He lets everyone. He lets everyone. Wait till you Canadian. watch Deadpool three. <laughs> so, I know. I got. I, I still have to watch. I'll wait for it to come on streaming. It'll be on Disney pretty soon. I bet. Probably like next month, something like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Mercedes Monet is winning this probably in a, in not so. Not a very easy fashion, I would say. Mm. But what is probably yeah, yeah, going yeah. to be the match of the night, because lo and behold, we have Hangman Page looking so much like a racist. Um, with that oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. He, looks like a, he looks like a young Zeb Coulter. <laughs> <laughs> Versus Swerve Strickland, oh, like who's that. doing his best Marvel villain impression. Um, so this obviously is the feud, again, that will never. This is like their CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. Obviously, Swerve did a, <laughs> Swerve did a home invasion a while ago on Hangman is, Page. Why does Hangman Adam Page look like he's posing for a Civil War trading card? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's doing those photos. Like the Civil yeah, War like reenactment photos? Dress, yeah. Yes. Like you dress up and you go in the booth and they take the black and white pictures of you. <laughs> like he's, he's from Biloxi, Biloxi, t- 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 m- Bel- Mississippi. Biloxi, Mississippi. Yeah. Biloxi, Mississippi. Yeah. I'm going like to go Earth and kill He makes Yanks. moonshine. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> yeah. Like on the back has his race stats. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this match came to be, obviously, Hangman Page tried to interfere in Swerve Strickland's main event match with Daniel Bryan, which I said before, probably wasn't needed in that very, very good match, Uh, but Hangman Page won a match, Swerve Strickland came out on Dynamite, they had a back and forth, Um, uh, Hangman Page was like, every time you beat me, you've always needed help, you can never beat me by yourself, So, (laughs) and Swerve was like, well... You know, you screwed me over from getting the world title. You know, you tapped out to Samoa Joe, not because you needed to tap out, because you hated me so much. You didn't want me to win the title, so you tapped out. Um, He went on to say that he stalked Hangman Page. Uh, He's parked outside of his house, and he... He watched Hangman Page take his pregnant wife to the hospital the day that they were going to have their second child, which is all types of scary. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, that's a bit stalkerish, I'd say. Yeah. And he talked about like maybe it's time for you to be like the the person that you that you should be and like essentially be at home and be a stay at home dad like you really want to be. You're not really built for a wrestler. And so I was like, you know what? Since you accuse me of always having to need help, we're gonna fight in the steel cage. So it's just us locked in the steel cage and nobody else. And I'll prove to you that I'm yeah. worth it. Which is literally great build. Perfect. Works. Makes all the sense in the world. I actually don't know how this is going to go because Swerve does have the advantage on Hangman Page. So the question is, do you want to make Hangman Page dive deeper and deeper into visually hating black people or do, <laughs> or do you give him a win for the sake of giving him a win? 
Um, I think you give it to Hangman because you've got to build credible heels for Daniel Bryan to conquer. And Swerve just lost, so he's already on a downward trajectory. If you're going down, might as well keep going. Nothing, nothing, nothing is better than a babyface on the chase. You gotta give some people reason to care. You gotta beat them down before you build them back up. So, Go ahead. I think this this this, this, this uh, storytelling and trajectory of wrestling momentum. Hangman's on the way up, Swerve's on the way down. Mm-hmm. So, what do you got, Kay? I would agree with that. I think Adam Page will win. Um, I really think I should watch AEW so I can have a better opinion. <laughs> But, That's why I watched for yeah. you to give you a synopsis of everything that occurred. I meant to watch it today too at work, which is just so funny. And then I just you know, just, to just didn't get around to doing it. I got oh no, work got crazy, crazy busy, and I just did not have the time for eating. Yeah, <laughs> what if Hangman's hung Swerve from the cage? Jesus to Quan. It's not the big boss. Man. I was saying WWE did it. <laughs> WWE did that at WrestleMania. <laughs> okay, so it's it's. It's not anything out of the realm of possibility. There is an issue with that suggestion. You're hanging somebody from a cage. Yo, quick, quick <laughs> sideberg to back to Bash in Berlin. You like in between matches, they have like those social media things. It's like, yeah, pop, pop quiz time. They asked someone what, what was the most devious moment in like wrestling history. And Damien Priest says when uh, Undertaker hung Big Boss Man. And if you notice when you watch that segment, they do cutaways for every single thing. That the rest of superstars mentioned, except for that one. <laughs> <laughs> they don't show the footage. And then he's like, I have oh, boss man did uh drag Big Show's dad's casket in the grave. They showed that one instead. <laughs> <laughs> Which ironically, according to the Big Show, was like the most therapeutic thing he needed for when like his father died. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was Boss Man killing Pepper. Oh, the dog? Yeah, yeah he, fed he, fed, him. he fed him. He fed him. Yeah, Bossman had a wild run that year. <laughs> he did. Although I think, I, think, I think Big Show's dad was still alive when that was filmed. No, he was dead. Was he dead? He, was, he had already passed. He had, like, recently passed, and then they did that segment. So, mm. so he, did, he did, like, his little eulogy in character, but it was, like, him talking to his dad. That's funny. And then Bossman comes and just, <laughs> just drags him away. Yeah. It's a wild scene. So, yeah, I... I I can see Hangman. It makes sense for Hangman. Like, Swerve's already restructured. He's already still, he's kind of still has that I was the former champion glow. Like, he made events at all in. You know, like, it's yeah. it's like, he's, he's his stock is still going to be extremely high. Like, he's essentially a made man in the company. Yeah, which is, why, which is exactly why he can take a loss. Like, the crowd <laughs> isn't going to stop being behind him because he loses, if anything. So root for him more. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, but Hangman taking a loss it could be like okay well you're the guy who loses yeah like like remember when shinsuke had his anime heel character oh, so good and pe- people loved it and we wanted more of it but he kept losing yeah and then losing and then losing eventually it's just like eh. we yeah. haven't seen him since hangman needs but it was it was a great gimmick yeah. it was a phenomenal gimmick hangman right? needs a win because every time logan paul yeah. does a buckshot lariat like, like hangman page loses loses status in AEW. Hangman Page comes that much more racist. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So I'm definitely going to go with Hangman. Are you also going with Hangman, k mm-hmm. All right, Hangman it is. Moving on to the lower part of this card. It's going to be over really soon. I'm telling you guys right now. Uh, MJF going up against Daniel Garcia. MJF came out on Dynamite. <laughs> what a Dynamite match. <laughs> well, no, but there's, there's reason behind this. MJF came out on Dynamite and said he was like, I lost my title. Since he, since since uh, Will Ospreay hit the Tiger Driver ninety one and he landed supposedly landed on his neck, he's like I have a he's like I have a herniated disc in my spinal column, you know. And when I was out here representing my country, all of you booed me. Like he did, he did great work. He goes, I don't care about America anymore. The only thing I care about is the most magical place on earth, Plainview, Long Island, New York. Plainview, <laughs> Long Island, baby. I was like, Jesus Christ, I hate you, MJF. So as when MJF was was you know uh, ascending to the Amer- uh, the American champion of AEW, uh, along his way to his ascension, he pretty much gave a pile driver to Daniel Garcia and in kayfabe essentially almost ended Daniel Garcia's career. And I think it was like a second rope pile driver too. Like it was pretty vicious. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> and Daniel Garcia was reasonably off TV for a considerable amount of time. So Daniel Garcia is coming back trying to avenge what MJF did to him by trying to essentially end his 
end his career with the same sort of move. So this is very much a blood feud uh, in and of itself. And again, I'm kind of on a toss up here. So I'm going to give it to you, KP. I know you're going to pick MGF because of Long Island, but would you consider I'm- Daniel Garcia? Um, Daniel Garcia is fine, but it's MJF. Gotta love that Long Island pride, <laughs> baby. Will Tarashak. It's I'm yeah. so biased towards MJF for everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's MJF. You know why? Because I forgot Daniel Garcia was even a person, let alone on the roster. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm going to go with Daniel Garcia because I just want to see MJF just spiral downhill. Now that he lost, mm-hmm. now that he lost America, <laughs> he just loses a match now. And his ring. And yeah, his ring. So according to according to Daniel Garcia, he stole the ring and pawned it off to somebody in Florida. God, it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So he stole the Dynamite Diamond ring. So MJF no longer has a Dynamite Diamond ring, which was only used once in AEW lore anyways. And I'm not going to lie. That, that ring probably doesn't no, work that much. No, he wore it a bunch. He wore but it wasn't, MJF is a, it wasn't like he used was a for anything else. Time diamond. Didn't he use the ring several times to like... Yeah, he cheat? used it. He used like brass knuckles. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't like using the match. It's like, like when it was when Dynamite Diamond Ring was first presented. I was like, it was, looked like it was going to be like a running trope. Yeah, I thought he used it in matches as like a re- like a brass he, knuckle. He kind the, of the first year he did. Yeah, but it just became. And he a, won it again. Yeah, and then they just kind of just forgot about it. He won it three times. That's all I remember. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, MJF has no jewelry, no gold, and I I just want to see him, you know, just go into madness because that I like an angry MJF. So that's what I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Daniel Garcia because, again, MJF's stock is the highest it can be. He can do no wrong right now. And at some point, he'll oh. find his way back into some sort of championship scene, but he can do these side quests right now and lose them. Oh, he can definitely do wrong. He can sign another extension. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he, like, tattoo AEW on, like, his foot or something like that? Yeah, yeah, it's on his leg. It's like... He got the poker chip with the AEW logo. Oh, yeah. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, because it was like. That's actually pretty good. That's Because it was good. like it, bet on yourself. It's, it's a nice tattoo. Yeah. Yes, exactly. He was like, I'm going to bet on myself. I'm like, okay, you got it. You, you made your point. You should probably get out of here. <laughs> but be with as me. The final match on the card. I'm surprised I'm saying the final match on the AEW All Out card because this is what we have so far Willow Nightingale versus Chris Statlander. The, yes, the, the Battle of Long Island, actually. <laughs> I'm like, I'm very invested. <laughs> yes. How this match came to be is there was a mixed tag match at zero hour for all in. Uh, Willow Nightingale's team won, so she got to pick the stipulation for Chris Statlander and her match. And it's going to be da, 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 a Chicago street fight. Because, yes, every city needs a gimmick match for AEW. London had the London ladder match. And All Out has the Chicago street fight in Chicago. Uh Chris Stadlander has Stokely Hathaway in her corner, uh, formerly known as Malcolm Bivens from NXT, which is a very interesting pairing, to be completely honest. Malcolm Bivens is just absolutely hysterical. Uh, and Willow Nightingale is currently the CMLL Women's Champion, I believe. Uh, so that, that plays nothing, the no factor in this, but this is going to be a street fight. This is going to be vicious. It's going to be very Long Island, probably. Uh, and I don't know who wins this. I, myself, although I do love Statlander, and I've seen her in person, and the indies when she was an alien. Remember that? Well, she was like the weird alien that like yeah, get the ET phone people. home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with Willow here. Okay. I'm also going to go with Willow. Any reason whatsoever? Just gut feeling. That's Stokey Hathaway with her. Yeah. That's Stoke. Yes. Yeah. He's winning. Obviously. What you, you said Statlander. Yeah, Statlander, of course. <laughs> gotta go with my fellow, I gotta go with my fellow Booper, of course. <laughs> she she was a really she was a really interesting Booper back in the day. Boop. Mm-hmm. Back. In- I love boop. I love booping people. It's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> Just sit on the subway. You go, hi, ma'am. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> I've I'm never sure done say, that. I'm sure that goes so well. I'm just saying, like. That's not subway behavior. I have never have. I'd be really weird. I'd be very angry if a strange kid was booming to me on the subway. I don't take the subway. I take the bus. Yeah. I'm higher class. (laughs) Yes, yes. I'm I'm sure. I'd pay $4 for my bus ticket. That's crazy. Oh man! So surprise, surprise! That is the entire AEW All Out card. It is literally one, two, three. It's six matches. Oh, speaking of Archer, Mister Fritz, what happened to Lance Archer? <laughs> that's 
true. What did happen oh, to Lance yeah. Archer? Dude, he was so good when AEW first debuted. Yeah. yeah. And then you remember it was with Jake the Snake? Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Then I think he got hurt, and then we just never heard from him again. Yeah, it, that, that sounds like an AEW thing, too. Like, remember when Keith Lee was on AEW? Has anybody seen him since? Exactly. Last we saw him was at the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <He was in laughs> yeah. Last we saw him was in WWE. You said the last time you saw Keith Lee was on TikTok? Yeah. When he voice over when I'll he like, does the voiceover for Mia Yim's TikToks. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's Mia funny. Yim will be doing like a makeup tutorial on her TikTok and she'll let Keith Lee narrate it. And Keith Lee has no idea what makeup is about. So he's like, okay, <laughs> and she's uh she's putting on something to cover up her face and she's putting some shit on her nose. <laughs> yeah. He's like he's like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I told her she looks great before without it, but she told me to fuck up. <laughs> but yeah, that's the entire AEW All Out card. Another big thing to notice with, to to uh, be aware of with AEW is that out of the blue, walking through the crowd, not to Wild Thing, to a completely different, not already made song, a custom song for himself. John Moxley came back. John Moxley oh. came back. Looks like a looks like a taller, paler. Sam Roberts, essentially, completely bald. Oh, oh. yeah, completely bald. Uh, speaking in Jake the Snake like riddles, saying this isn't his company anymore. He gets to talk to somebody. Essentially, he's going after Darby Allen. Why? Why the fuck not? Oh, oh Mox? Yeah. Okay. Mox is going after Darby Allen, and he has. He has. I'm going to bleed first. No, uh, I'm going to bleed first. He now also has a heater in Marina Shafir, who looks like. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's they're they're an interesting duo. He it just happened. So I don't know what Moxley has in mind for his character. I'm intrigued by it though. It's the most most intrigued I've ever been of John Moxley ever. You know, I think he's going away from the whole broke man Stone Cold Steve Austin gimmick. Uh, but well, that is yet to be seen. That is yet to be seen. But... Fred, has, Fred has a good point. Shane's going to be with him. Has Shane done anything in the AEW yet? Shane I know hasn't even... Tony at that meeting. Yeah, but he doesn't mean he's officially signed. It probably just means they talked. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be really cool if Shane showed up in AEW. That would be wild. <laughs> I think that would be very, very big for AEW if they got Shane on board. Yeah. I want Shane yeah. McMahon to come out and be like, I own WCW. I mean, I own AEW. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing Tony Khan fears is someone else's money. <laughs> <laughs> I would be down for an for a, a McMahon trying to steal AEW storyline from Tony Khan. Yeah, like you have um their blood that, blood actually. and guts team McMahon versus Team Khan. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I I I'd, I'd buy that paper for you. <laughs> yeah, it'd be really cool. I mean, I, I'm serious. I, I do think. I, I mean, AEW. Um, what if my friend and I were talking about, talking about this at work today because yeah. she and her fiance were at All Out in London. Mm -hmm. They did they did 16 days across Europe around this wrestling trip, Yo. which God oh, wow. bless them. Dope. So yeah, I mean, they had they had a great time. And then they showed me their seats. They had really good like they had floor seats, really really good seats. Nice. So they were saying the atmosphere was great, and we were just talking about like how AEW, because they don't watch WWE anymore. They just watch AEW. Okay. And because um, she's like, there's only so much time you got to pick one, and I picked this one. I'm like, that's fair. Uh, but AEW is just the product, the presentation, and this like the vibe of the fan is a lot better around AEW. There's a lot more confidence in AEW. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the Shane that I mean we we mentioned the uh, last week with the four international shows we don't hear so much talk about how there's no one in the arena or ratings anymore and now with the merge of possible Shane McMahon AEW has had a lot of good press lately and a lot of good reaction from fans so I think I really do think Shane McMahon would be a big boost to this company and a kick in the ass it definitely needs because it has been going in the right direction. Most of this year, Most of it, definitely. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. All Out was a great show. All Out was a really, really good show. I mean, they, they had some things to clean up. We talked about it last week, you know, yeah. presentation-wise and, like, aesthetically. But, like, in-ring and stuff, it was good. The matches that were supposed to hit, hit. Um, and I think Shaman Man would only boost it. It'd be interesting to see what he does with it. Like, I want Shane McMahon to try to take over AEW, and then I also want Shane McMahon to bring Raw Underground to AEW. Like, revamp, like, AEW. AEW Underground? Revamp, like, AEW Rampage. They call it, like, AEW Underground. <laughs> like, no ring. I want the dancing women. I want all that ridiculousness back again. 
Oh. I want Omas as the giant ass doorman. <laughs> like, <laughs> R.I.P. The Raw Underground Girls. It's called AEW Shuffle. It's a Shane McMahon doing a Shane McMahon shuffle. <laughs> Until he blows out his quads again. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was so sad. I felt so bad for him. And The Miz. <laughs> they made, listen, Snoop and The Miz made it work. They made it work. <laughs> Snoop and The Bring back AEW under dark as underground. No, no. AEW dark needs to stay in the dark <laughs> forever, <laughs> forever. They have enough programming on a weekly basis. You can replace that with something or like ha- well, dark elevation. Yeah. Is that what it's called? No, it was dark like and dark one- elevation. Dark. Yeah. Dark and dark elevation. Yeah. Or, or what if, what if they do an angle where Shane like buys ROH from Tony? Oh, yeah. I would be interested in that. Well, there's yeah. there's a story for it. Like you bought ROH, so you did nothing with it, <laughs> and then he sells it back to Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like where it belongs. Shane McMahon's <laughs> just an agent for WWE. <laughs> it's you like it's like, what, it's like what everyone thought Vince Russo was in the '90s at WCW. <laughs> Shane McMahon actually becomes <laughs> Shane's actually doing it for Triple H. <laughs> They're like, Shane, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, I'm just scouting for Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> Don't mind me. That'd be great. But let's let's revert it back to to, to All Out. The name on the contract <laughs> Nick is Khan. Khan. <laughs> Nick Khan. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, Fred. Tip good. of the crown to you, my friend. That was, that was good. good. What and guts could be Team Con versus Team Con. <laughs> Honestly, if it was Team Khan versus Team Khan, I I think Nick Khan would be the crap out of Tony Khan. Yeah, anyone could be the crap out of Tony Khan. <laughs> I don't know, man. Remember the first time you saw Vince take off his shirt and like, wow, yeah, but- did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, did you see that coming in Rumble 99 when Vince? No, it was uh, 98 no. when him and him and Austin. Yeah, he had the that, training that, like- montage. Yeah, <laughs> he had to chase the I chicken. Hate Austin. I hate him. No, it was it was him. before that. It was before that. It was like a random Raw in '98. Vince comes down in, the, in his black tank, like I'm wearing. Yeah. Except he was just completely Rock yoked, and you're just like, yeah. you're just like, I did not see that coming. I hate I'm Austin. Because Tony Khan is just more ripped. <laughs> no, he's not. I can tell. I hate Austin. I hate Austin. There was a segment where Johnny and Candace went to WWE headquarters for like the first time. Uh, it's like the old headquarters and like they like Vince's training montage when he's doing I hate Austin is in that gym in the headquarters because Vince had a yeah. full gym. And yeah. so Johnny and Candace decide to do a workout just just because there's a gym there. And so like Johnny brings out just Johnny's a Shawn Michaels. He brings out like a Shawn Michaels shorts and everything. And he's doing like rows. He's like, I hate Austin. I hate Austin. I hate Austin. And Candace is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Fucking hate him. Oh man, it was a lead up to that. Apparently, apparently they they do tours of WWE headquarters. The new one? Do yeah, they really? No, and the old one. Because we Jazz and I have a friend who lives in Stanford or grew up in Stanford, and she's like, "Yeah, you can just go in and like they give you a tour, and it's really wild." It's like they have rings, all the statues, the different offices. Yeah, I'd it's be like, down. Yeah, they have, the they, they have they have a bunch of free prime everywhere. <laughs> it's like yeah, of course it's free f- prime everywhere. Find out how trip? much it is, and we'll take a road trip. I'm down. I'd be surprised if it's free, honestly. I mean, if it is, road trip. Road trip? <laughs> yeah. So you're your headquarters tour. Headquarter tour. Listen, I can pick all both of you guys up. You're literally both on the way to Connecticut. So it works out. Yay, road trip. <laughs> road trip to headquarters just for shits and giggles. I wonder if there's a merch store. There's got to be a merch store in there. What if we put the GoPro in the car and we live streamed our Tuesday episode from the car to the headquarters? <laughs> right, we could do we could do a ride along. We did do that once. I don't think I have a GoPro anymore. Um, we could figure something out. Mm-hmm. We'll do it anyway. Back to all out again. This show again is going to be short, quick, to the point. Um, CM Punk being locked in is still hilarious. That's very true. Uh, but back to all out. <laughs> <laughs> How good do we think this show will be? Like I said, the only match I'm really looking forward to, uh, to be honest with you, is Hangman and Swerve, because I think that match is going to be absolutely batshit insane. Uh, yeah, it's the only one with intrigue. Yeah. Other than that, a lot of this is kind of predictable for the most part. So I am i don't expect it to be as good as All In, because it shouldn't be as good as All In, because then you'd have a problem. Uh, I'm going to go with a seven here. Okay, Fabe. 
seven. Yes. Will Tarashock. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to watch it, but uh, if I was, I'd say a six and a half. Fair. Fair enough. Very, very much. Very, very so fair. Much. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't figured it out on Discord yet, have you? Nope. Nope. Yeah, you, you will. Have, to be fair, I haven't really looked, though. Touche. 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 Many folks. Yeah, it's just too many fucking chats to go through. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's why it's categorized by, by organization. Which, yeah, I know, but that doesn't help because I don't know where it would be. <laughs> just highlight the ones you haven't read yet. It's probably in no, there. No, I see. I, I, I click through all of them. Uh, so they're all read. Ah, uh, uh, well, you're, you're shit out of luck then. Fred, you're saying four? You're going to give it off. Oh, that's Charles. Charles is giving it a four. No, Miss, no. Charles said four, and then Fred said, I think we're getting like four more matches booked tomorrow. Ah, okay. Charles also might be giving AEW all out of four, because it's totally within his range. Fred's is saying six. Now we're just putting out numbers. I, I don't know. Anywho, folks, that's pretty much the end of our show. Does anybody have any final thoughts on wrestling this week, Will or Kay? I don't. You know what's really funny? We were supposed to have Slack on the show, but then I forgot. Yes, forgot. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. It's either it's either we're all on the show and we forget to have Slack on the show or one of us is missing oh my the God. show when K- Slack is on. Kay's image watching NXT making chicken cutlets. <laughs> so is incredible. Good. Kay, I love your living room setup. Thank it looks you. So comfortable. It is very comfy. Because it views yeah. into the living room. It's really it's really cool. Yeah, it looks it looks it looks fucking Thank dope. Thank you. I yeah. love our apartment. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, let's let's get the fuck out of here. Will Tasha? Okay, it's probably it's probably a tip of the crown thing. Uh... <laughs> we'll talk about a tip of the crown, but it's not a tip of the crown thing. I don't think it's a tip of the crown thing. No, it's definitely not. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to King's Rings Pops Podcast, episode number 388. Podcast. Pop, podcast, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> it's episode number 388, potentially called Slightly Canadian. I'll probably think of something else by the time it's actually debuts. I've been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets. Find Kings of the Rings Podcast at KOTR underscore podcast. Like, share, subscribe. The links to all of that stuff is in the description below. If you're listening to us, making sure you are listening to us on Wrestle Attic Radio, the cure for the Common Wrestling Podcast and follow Wrestle Attic Radio socials at Addict underscore Wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle Attic Radio, all one word everywhere else. The links to that, again, are in the description below. And feel free to buy some of our fantastic merch, which is on sale pretty much all the time. We have good uh, country-specific stuff, and we're going to have a lot more stuff for the fall, potentially bomber jackets, anybody, and some of your hoodies, K, that you like as well. Uh, So I'll be working on that uh, sometime in the near future. Will Tarashock. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, apparently I'm Butch, not a Butch, not the Butch, just straight up Butch. Not even Butch, not even Butcher and the Blade. All right, I'm you, just, you don't want to be Butcher and the Blade. I, I'm I'm just Butch, but I call myself Will Tarashek, T's and Thomas, A R A S H U K. Yeah, I don't have anything else witty to find to say. So, K Murphy, you got to explain to me what Butch is in the post. Nice rhyme there. I'm actually bailing yeah. right after this because once again, I have a puppy that requires my attention. But That's you can find yeah. me on Instagram and TikTok at K A E underscore F A B E. And that's it. I have nothing. <laughs> Listen, that's, that's what happens when we talk about AEW. Sometimes you just have nothing. But until we, when we come back next week, we're going to have the fallout from All Out. We're going to have the season premiere of WWE all on the USA Network. And maybe one day we will go back to believing in Joe Henry. So until then, folks, goodbye, good night. We'll see you soon. And sorry, not sorry, Slack. Fuck you, Slack. We'll see you next week. It's the fallout. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.